Hey, business building warrior, welcome to Silent Sales Machine Radio, the podcast that features successful students from the proven Amazon course community. We've got hundreds of episodes where we interview and give tips and strategies from the people who are taking our training, coaching students, our proven Amazon course students, and building beautiful businesses and then sharing their journeys with us. And today I've got a guest who I've known for a long time. Our kids have grown up together. He's been a friend for a long time. We served on the board of a church together several years ago. Our daughters are friends. They've attended proms together, that sort of thing, right? But I've started noticing something in the past several years, especially. It's kind of ramped up where I just can't stop sharing and talking about Amazon and e-commerce. And over time, there's a lot of people in my local area, not just around the world who listen to this podcast, but in my local area who are really catching on and building amazing businesses. Many of them have become coaches on our team. And my friend Mike today, who you're about to meet, we're talking about bringing him on as a coach on the team as well. That's how these things go. When you're doing business the right way, when you're excited about what you do, when you've got legitimate opportunity and you love sharing it with others, these are the kinds of things that you would expect to happen. So it's an honor to bring on a friend of mine who's uh, been in the corporate world for a long time as he shares, but he found himself, you know, we're about the same age and here he is approaching his mid fifties and he's making a big career change and he's finally the landscape has shifted. So he started looking for other opportunities, got into Amazon to make a long story short and give you a little bit of a summary. They've now built a very nice five figure per month business. They're hitting about $30,000 a month. He tells me he's about to expect $40,000 a month in sales at nice margins. He dives into all the details using the replens system as taught in the proven Amazon course. He's got his sights set on some other opportunities as well that we'll dive into, specifically building out bundles through the proven branded bundling system that's part of the proven Amazon course collection of trainings, as well as maybe doing some consulting, helping other brands get onto Amazon. Lots of lucrative opportunities in the mix. He's going to be building multiple income streams soon. He's really dialed in and he's made it a family adventure as well, getting this Amazon business up and going. So enjoy this episode. Lots of good tips and strategies that he brings to the table. I learned a few things, so I'm sure you will as well. Thanks for hanging out with us. Let's get my friend Mike Alti on the line right now. So Mike, my friend, great to see you, man. Thanks for jumping on the podcast. Absolutely. Good to see you. Well, we go way back, and I may have mentioned some of that in the introduction as well, but uh, let's just reminisce just a little bit so to okay. put some context around our relationship, and then we'll get into your Amazon business. Take it away, man. Uh, I met Jim about 30 years ago, probably through- Has it been 30, church? dude? Yeah, it's been pretty close to 30. <laughs> as you look We're back old. Well, yeah, I mean, our kids are, you know, our maybe, kids were all maybe little, 20, little it's, it's been many years, so- yeah. Knew you back before you went full time entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so at the time, I always dreamed of it a little bit, always dreamed of having my own business. Uh, was in corporate America and was really just kind of too chicken or too afraid to start. I mean, started off, I had a family and well, about insurance and, you know, all those types of questions just kept me from really taking the plunge. So, yeah, most people do kind of get get stuck there and like, you know, yeah. what about, I've got some good benefits. What about the 401k, that sort of thing, right? Yeah, right. That, that snags a lot of folks. And, and um, I was there myself a long time. Yeah. yeah. So about, I don't know, about uh, 18 months ago now, I had the unexpected opportunity to pursue other opportunities, kind of a polite way of saying I unexpectedly lost my job. But after 30 years of corporate world, I kind of expected I'll just go back to corporate world. I don't have, you know, that many years left towards retirement, continue to do what I know and pays well and that type of thing. And then found out that in your mid fifties, it's much harder to uh, find a job in corporate America than it was when you're in your thirties and your forties. And so after talking to multiple people and applying to jobs and, and not getting uh, really many even callbacks for things that I should have been well qualified for, um, started saying, okay, Lord, what, what's next? What's this really looking like? And uh, kind of one, one roadblock after the other along those lines. And at about the same time of, of talking to some people who were doing leads and said, you know, Mike, Somebody in their mid fifties who's looking for corporate America, it's a tough time for a change and kind of hear some expectations from people who have been there. And about that time, I ran into you after, you know, a couple of years of probably seeing you as well as talking to my brother-in-law all about the same time. So, okay, is this, you know, is this time for the, to do something else? And, and I, so, I remember that conversation too. It, it was yeah. in passing at, at, because when I saw you jump in, I'm like, wait a second, I should have spent yeah. more time talking with Mike because you yeah. just are 
daughters were attending a homeschool prom. Is that the conversation yeah. you're talking yeah. about, right? And yeah. you just said in passing, hey, how's that Amazon thing going? I'm like, yeah, man, it's 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 going great, you know, helping a lot of people get started. Our business is doing well. And and, and the conversation couldn't have lasted more than 30 seconds. I had no yeah. idea that you were contemplating a major career change yeah. direction at that point. We just spent more time talking. That's all right. Well, you know, I'd spent time, yeah, I'd spent quite a bit of time of praying and thinking about it and contemplating it. And, and my wife would probably agree with you on the you know, I'd been thinking about it in the back of my mind and, and what's what's the right step and what's this look like? And if I'm going to go out on my own, what career path does that look like? Because, you know, it could have taken a couple of different options. And I talked to my wife and said, you know, I'm thinking pretty hard about doing this. And she's like, okay, I'll back you in whatever you do. And at the time, we were going to remodel on a house. And uh, I called her and I said, well, by the way, I just signed up. Um, we, we signed up for coaching. We signed up for the uh, Pack for Life and uh, we're doing this. Nice. She's like, oh, well, I, I'm glad you know. And I did. We had a conversation, but you know, it was one of those things that, in her mind, she didn't know if this is something we're going to talk about for six months or. Right. And that was a couple of days later. By the way, here we go. Let's go. Yeah, so, you've never been an impulsive guy, and, and really, well, you spend yeah. a lot of time thinking about it, and like you said, yeah. praying about it, and and bouncing off Kelly, your wife, who's you know we've been friends with you guys forever. So I I just love these stories. You know, it, as I've been doing this for a long time, Mike, it's some of, some of my favorite stories to dive into or some of the people that I just go way back with that we finally kind of have overlapped in this e-commerce world. And, and it's like here locally, there's yeah. gotta be 20, 30 people now that, yeah. you know, 10 years ago had no idea kind of what I was up to. And now they're like, okay, well, there's something to this. And now this right. is what they do. Yeah. Pretty amazing. I, I think sometimes, you know, you go to the store shelf and you, you think you find something and you're like, wait a minute, every time I come on such and such a day, these shelves are empty. I think I know another buyer who's doing this particular product. <laughs> 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 oh, and it's not even so much about that. I mean, I mean, most of what we're doing now is online, although we just hired somebody to, to do our retail sourcing. Yeah. But I mean, once you understand how this game works, there's ASINs everywhere. Yeah. I mean, there, it's there just, are. I just think there, there's a lot of people in this particular area, some who met you through, you know, whether it be church or some other avenue, but uh, as you start going to the local groups and, and meetups and whatever else, you find, you know, there's, a, there's plenty of people out there doing this that you don't really hear about unless you just happen to be in the community and talking to different people. And so yeah. there's, there's times you find stuff that way. Yeah, yeah. A lot of good a lot of good people here locally. Um, the, the local, And I would just, on a side note, encourage people, you've got to find some local people that are doing what you do. Yeah. Or at least business owners, ideally e-commerce business owners, and hang out with them, get to know them, build relationships, because the doors of opportunity really do come more from that than from the the head knowledge and the right. understanding of the new tools and techniques and strategies and that sort of thing. And I know that that's come probably very naturally to you guys. You've got a great network locally. Yeah. Yeah. The network locally has been great. Uh, Travis Sears kind of heads it up and, mm -hmm. and he's one of your, your coaches and, and mm -hmm. does a great job, but uh, he reaches out and supports the group locally, whether it be just through coordinating who's going to show up when, but being available for questions and reaching out and going, hey, you mentioned this the other day. Give me more details. You know, yep. he's right there all the time with uh, anything he can do to help. So yeah, it, it's pretty crazy how many of the coaches, how many guys I go to church with who yeah. one day in passing said, hey, kind of like with you, tell me a little bit more about that Amazon thing. I've been checking out the podcast. Like, oh, yeah. I'll give you a short little couple minute conversation. Sometimes it leads to nothing. Sometimes it leads to, hey, now they're a success story on the team right. and they're a coach with us, right? Yeah. So I've got a good handful of coaches who attend church with me now. It's pretty right. fun. Yeah. It's like just kind of waving across the room at, at coaches yeah. on the team and students. And it's certainly not just local, but I've I've enjoyed this season of seeing it kind of catch on locally as, uh, you know, my circle of friends has grown and and uh, it's it's very rewarding, man. And I know you're on, a, you're on a trajectory too. We've kicked around, hey man, at some point, let's get you into that leadership role of yeah. maybe do some coaching because you really are grasping the concepts based on what I'm seeing. Yeah. It, it's the, uh, you know, you, you talk to new students or you hear somebody pop on the Facebook group and say, no, I can't find anything. This is so frustrating. And, and I can relate. Those first few weeks are, are a grind and, you know, helped uh, a friend's wife through some of it and, and going through and, and they're just grinding through it. Can't find anything. Can't find anything. And then all of a sudden, you know, they talk about before click and after click on, on a couple of podcasts with the Olsons. And you're like, okay, I, I finally see it now. It, it's clicked and they're, they are out there. Yeah. Yeah, in abundance. Yeah. yeah. Just a matter how much time you have to test and then building a good system. Yeah. yeah. Well, f fill me in. How, how's it been going? And, and you know, keep the story rolling. I, it's sure. easy for me to get sidetracked with you because there's a lot of little, sure. there's a lot of history. There's a lot of it, little stories to be told. But, you know, let's let's give the listeners some, uh, some specifics from your story. Sure. Right now we're doing about 1,600 different sales per month. 
um, which averages to about $19 per item as people look at kind of what the item is. Now, we've got some items that are all the way down to $8 in sales that we might make. We buy for $2 and, and make $2, $2.50 profit on. Um, we've got things that are selling for $100. But as I look back over the last couple of days, our average price is about $19 an item. We've been here for several weeks now. We're looking at about 30000 revenue per month. Uh, we have about 350 active product listings right now. So it seems like there, there's been a few big sellers over the course of time. Um, you're like, man, I love this product. I'm making good money and I sell as many as I can get my hands on. But as you talk about those those products, you know, things come and go. And you hear them say it and it makes it makes sense. But until you've had a product that's been selling really well and then it starts to dry up on you mm-hmm. and you, you feel that pain. And so it's kind of those things and you mentioned other people and you know, I hear you say it when I was starting off, but it didn't really sink in until you feel it. But if you, mm-hmm. you know, start slow and as you're ramping up and, and you talk about not having more than 30 days of inventory at any one time, you're like, okay, that makes sense. But you're like, okay, I just sold a product for, I sold three of them in one day. So three times 30, 90, I need to go buy 90 right now and send it in. It's like, wait, hold on. It, it may not always sell at three a day. You know, if you, I mean, you sell and send in the first time, let's send in a few more for sure, but, but let's not, let's slowly build up into that 90. And I've heard the Olson say it until you've been burned a little bit a couple of times, you're, you're, most of us are gung-ho. We want to get the business going and started, but, you know, work hard, go for it, but also take a breath here. Don't try to send in 30 days at one time. Yeah. That's, that's such an important lesson in, and I, I said, I actually, the, I think the podcast episode dropped today. I was talking with a, a student who's, who's ramped up relatively quickly and a, cl- a clean way to say what we're talking about right now is given the option between having three ASINs that perform really, really well, let's say a hundred sales a month or a hundred ASINs that sell three times a month, same number of total sales, Right. which scenario is better? Without question, you want to be the hundred ASIN selling three times a month, because again, it's all about minimizing risk, not getting emotionally tied to any one ASIN and seeing how far you can push your discounts and how many you can fit on a crate to get it, you know, the maximum margin. Because as soon as you do that, you'll learn the lesson the hard way a few times. And it it really comes down to uh, one of the things I've noticed is, because I remember these days in my business, is you can't get emotionally tied to an ASIN. As soon as you get emotionally tied to it, you find yourself thinking about it and kind of projecting the math out six months like, ah, you're in too deep, man. Yeah. <laughs> Reel it in. Yeah. Let's think about the next few weeks because it could be gone two weeks from now. It could be gone tomorrow. Yeah. So how deep do you really want to go? And once you understand that lesson, you really can mitigate, minimize any potential downside. Yeah. And then it's just a matter of finding more ASINs and building a good system. Yeah. It, but yeah. that is a vital lesson. Pretty much anyone who ever comes to us and says, ah, oh, man, I lost money last month. It was because they went too deep. Yeah, an ASIN that they felt really good about. Right. Yeah, you're, you're definitely going to have uh, those opportunities to figure what to do with the inventory. You know, across from me, the uh, work out of the basement, but there's a table with uh, it's probably about a week's and a half worth of product if it was selling at the rate it was. And it's actually still selling well, but I got called kind of the size inflation where the manufacturer cut the size of the package significantly. Mm. And so now it no longer matches the description. And uh, so now I'm sitting here with, because I, it was selling fast enough, you know, it's like, uh, I have a daughter that works on the north side. Hey, you know, on your way home from work, stop by this store and this store and pick up everything they have because whatever they have, I can sell. And uh, by golly, all the whole family was supporting me and, and buying everything. And, and now I've got a, a table full of product that I need to figure out what to do with because it's the wrong size. Ah, uh, yeah. It, well, did the ASIN actually change or did it? No, the ASIN reason? hasn't changed. It still shows the old size. And, you know, they, they may catch on and, and catch up. I've tried a few times to go in and say, hey, by the way, you know, here's what the manufacturer's selling and mm-hmm. they, they haven't been willing to change it. But Yeah, usually they won't. Yeah, yeah. so I see what happened. It, it it used to be sold as a 30 ounce. Right. Now it's sold as a 28 ounce. Right. And the 30 ounce listing, which has always has been the way it was sold, is still out there, but there's no 28 ounce listing yet, or at least if there is, it's not doing well. Yeah, I totally hear right. you. That comes down to just, that's one of the other hard lessons that every, in that first yeah. year, man, everyone learns. You got to make sure it's the exact size, weight, description. Yeah. And I don't get too caught up. Some people are like, hey, it's got to have the same barcode. I don't get too caught up on that, actually, uh, because you'll see products that are identical with different barcodes for different regions in the country, for example. Yeah. Same yeah. products, same ingredients, same packaging, customer experience, identical. Yeah. But 
the barcodes are different. So I don't get too worked up about that one. I also, I typically on this topic, I'm, you know, just hopefully this is useful for you, Mike, or maybe some other ones who are listening. I don't get too caught up. Like if they say, Hey, um, all new fresh scent, but it's the same exact thing they've always had. You know, yeah. it's like, you look at the ingredients, it's the same. They're just highlighting it with like new little sunshine emblem yeah. or something. And it's nothing else has changed except the packaging. Yeah. I'll sell that on the same ASIN. It looks a little different because really what it's all about is, is a customer, you know, if you sell it to a hundred customers, are any of them going to complain? Right. And if the answer is, well, they might, okay, you probably shouldn't sell it. Right. No customer is going to complain that the barcode didn't match. Even, you know, the product was right. identical. No customer is going to complain that the color of the cap has changed. The product and ingredients are identical. Right. right. But they might change if you're selling a 30 ounce. They think they're getting a 30 ounce and they get a 28. Yeah. Or even you'll have people complain, Mike, I thought I was going to get a 30 ounce, but I got a 34 ounce. Right. Some people think they can get away with that. Oh, I just given them a little more value. No. Yeah. <laughs> so like, it's too heavy for me to lift onto the shelf, right? right? Yeah. Someone's going to complain. <laughs> so don't yeah. make sure the weight's the same. But yeah, yeah, good stuff, man. You're learning a lot of great lessons for sure. Yeah. So hey, so we're not even a year in yet, are we? Away, we'll no, I started in, in really in May. So Okay. So about eight, eight well, months. Yeah, eight months. And you guys were at the conference. Yep. With us this summer, we were, we were very new to that. But you had the whole yeah. crew there. It was great. Yeah. All your all your and daughters. So most of that, most of that whole crew is still actively supporting me. I have my my mom and Ashley, who's my oldest daughter, and Kelly. You know, help me pack up and work every week. Kelly's gotten really good at uh, sourcing and as well as shopping, and so she does a big part of the business with me as well. That's phenomenal, man. I didn't I didn't realize that she was that actively involved. Still, yeah. I love hearing that Ashley's there. That means you get to see. Uh, your grandkids and yeah. you get to hang out with family. And yeah. that's so, a lot of the benefit of this, man, is just you look around and your coworkers are your kids and family right. and the people you been, love. Yeah, it's been really good. I've had multiple people comment, you know, you seem much more relaxed and and I'm sure there's stress of starting your own business or whatever else, but you, you seem much happier. And I have been. It's been a really good experience. So ah, that's awesome. I love been, to hear it, man. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. So we've been packing up about 20 boxes a week now. And uh Love pirate ship that you know I heard about through through here and other people like how in the heck do you do that? But uh, still buy your shipping through Amazon, but just schedule for four bucks. They'll pick up whatever you want off your porch or the driveway or mm -hmm. or whatever, and not having to carry 20, 50 pound boxes to the UPS store and stand in line is a has been right. a, a wonderful gift. Yeah, we well, we've we've got some really nice dudes that have owned really nice little UPS stores in the area. Uh, yeah. But man, I don't like going in there with fifteen boxes right before yeah. they close. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you get you learn those little tricks how to to navigate the system for a few extra bucks, create convenience, and it sounds like you guys are figuring it out. And yeah. so you're running your whole operation out of the out of the house in yes. the basement. You said right? Yep. Fantastic. So you know, some of my challenges to look at is working working hard, and uh, as you mentioned on the podcast, the intense focus um, about six days a week has been you know sun up to sundown, and then some many days take a little bit of time off to help coach one of the kids' robots teams and things like that, but uh, it's been a, been a lot of work and, and I've enjoyed it. But as you look at, okay, now I need to look at, uh, do you outsource some sourcing, uh, look at a virtual assistant, some things like that, or do I look at uh, a prep center for some of it to pick up a few hours? It's hard to do a prep center if you're making two bucks an item. Even if that's a really good ROI, if you pay somebody a buck fifty to package that item, there's nothing left. So right. you know, you've got to get that price up a little bit more and that uh, profit per item up in order to have the room to, if you're going to look at doing a prep center and some of that. So that's kind yeah. of one of my, my challenges right now of, of working that direction. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I like to see, you know, we've got a great prep center network. I own a prep center in the area, right? right. But I'm not out aggressively telling people, yeah, you need a prep center. You got to get a prep center because I've seen a lot of creative solutions that, you know, integrate family, integrate a neighbor, have them start doing some of the prep for you. You know, I, I like to use the example of a sweet old lady across the street who's got plenty yeah. of room and plenty of time and loves having neighborhood kids come do the work. And she's a good, right. you know, she can oversee and manage the process. Solutions like that can ultimately cost you less than right. going full prep center. But the first hire is, you know, kind of, I think you mentioned Kelly's kind of starting to play this role, your wife, yep. but finding ASINs. Right. Finding, so if you can train someone get yourself a virtual assistant, train them, right? get your knowledge into their head for three, $4 an hour working hard on your behalf and eliminate that piece. Right. And that frees up a lot of margin. Right. And uh, now the game is simplified and, and more profitable for you just right. almost instantly. So that, that would probably be a next move for you guys right. is 
start finding a VA. Uh, and I would, there's an episode, I can't remember the number off the top of my head. I'll stick it in the show notes. Um, it, it's probably 20, 30 episodes behind what we're recording now, but where I talk about some of the things you need to know about hiring a VA based on the experiences I've had. And I think you'll find that episode very useful, the listeners and you, Mike, to kind of go through. And there's a module inside the Proven Amazon course too about hiring VAs. Right. Yep. That'd be a good, maybe next step for you guys to start leaning. And I, I like to see people hire and train someone who's who's got a good reputation, but maybe not Amazon experience necessarily, or very, very minimal Amazon experience, because I don't want someone that's working for 30 other sellers. Right, absolutely. <laughs> I want someone that's working for me. Right. And uh, we've learned that lesson a few different ways, but yeah, yeah, that's a good next step for sure. Well, we didn't, we mentioned some of the numbers and just out of being thorough about what's your, what your net margins look like either for the year or typical, like what's the, what's the operating margin on this thing? The right now, our net margin is about 18% the last Which couple months. Isn't um, bad at all. And you talk about know your numbers and uh, we did seller board, I don't know, pick it up about a month and a half ago, maybe. And it, a little bit entertaining because, you know, when I first started listening to podcasts, you talk about know your numbers and, you know, how great seller board is. And in the back of my mind, I think, yeah, I'm a numbers guy. I can do this myself. Yeah, right. I don't, I don't need help. I can calculate these numbers. And I do love numbers and I do love spreadsheets. But there are so many, so much time spent sourcing and, and things like that that I never, it's hard to find the time to go back and do those calculations yourselves. And, you know, there's a lot of bolt-on applications like seller board to make things easier one reason because a lot of the Amazon systems are not particularly easy to use or user friendly in and of themselves. And so it's not that you can't get to the numbers, it's just not there in your face. And so uh Solar Board really helped me out to, to know to know my numbers. And there's times there's several items I'm like, oh I'm doing really well on this product. And you look at the it comes back on Solar Board, you're like, oh wait a minute, what happened? And yep. so by finding some of those items, it really helped me to increase my margins overall by just better understanding where I was at. Like, you know what? On these items here, if I can't get that price up a little bit, it's really not worth this up. And so, you know, that was that was very helpful. Another one of those things, until you really learn the lesson yourself, you can hear yourself or other people on the podcast talk about it, and you're like, oh, I'm okay, I'm okay. And then you're like, oh, I didn't need that lesson. That, that helped a lot. So, yeah. With all seller board is uh, they're a great sponsor of this program, and and we we helped them get rolling a few years ago. And now I don't know how many thousands of people in our community use that tool. Because like you said, they they really dig in, they find all the little fees, all the little leaks in the boat and you kind of right. break it down on a per ASIN basis. So you know exactly. It's a it's a really nice thing to know as a replin seller. What right. are my top 20% of my best ASINs? Right. That are that are they can be my money right now. I want to keep an eye on those and keep those well fueled and and restocked. And and what are my 20% that I think are great because I'm selling in a week? But I'm only making a quarter a piece, man. And any right. price shift at all, I'm dead. I thought I was making five bucks on these things. I'm only yeah. making 25 cents after yeah. all fees are considered. All right. So it's really good to know those things and not just go on instinct or the uh, momentum of an ASIN. Yeah. You can get sucked into the momentum of an ASIN that's moving quickly and then lose track of, man, I, I'm spending a lot of time, effort, and energy to make just a little bit. Right. Um, and it, but you, that's where the emotional, you got to remove the emotional attachment to these things. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. seller board is kind of just forces you to, it's, a, it's like a moment of reckoning with the reality of the ASINs that you've got in your yeah. portfolio, right? Right. Yeah. The, for those who are interested, if you haven't heard us talk about seller board before, go to silentgym.com slash numbers and you'll see the special offer. It's like 15 bucks a month starting yeah. out. It's super cheap, but yeah, it really digs in and gets you some good info. A lot of other features too. So yeah, thanks for giving them a shout out. They'll appreciate that. Yeah. But one of the other things that's helped us with our our little, which is really a family team pitching in right now. Um, and you've talked about having kind of a shared spreadsheet that you guys look at on your phone. And that's been helpful. The other thing in there, uh, minor details, but on the, you know, I, I have tabs for the stores that I'm looking at type of thing. And then I copy those tabs over to the shopping list and said, okay, you know, you guys can look at this anytime. Here's the list. But putting a link within that spreadsheet that clicks over to Amazon, because sometimes in the description, you know, I sourced it. I've bought it. I know exactly what I'm looking for. It's this model and this color label or whatever. But hey, if somebody else is picking that up to be able to click on that link, if it's not crystal clear and go to the Amazon page and go, ah, that's exactly what they're looking for, mm -hmm. has saved that item of, oh, that's not what I meant for you to buy. So 
small, but it really helped us yes. out. Put a link in there to be able to click in the store. Great so. tip. And I just want to make sure that, and I'm going to do a little spreadsheet nerd segment here, Mike, and I yeah. think you're going to appreciate this. Uh, the listeners, hopefully many of them will stick with me here. It's not super complicated, but there's a formula that makes that what you just described super right. simple. You're using yeah. that, correct? Yeah. Okay. So it's the same URL for every ASIN and you stick the right. ASIN on the end. Yep. Now you got a working link. Okay. So you've got a yep. formula doing that for you. You're not right. copy pasting in different. No, no, okay. no. no. Because Beautiful. I already have the ASIN number over there and I just copy right. the formula over. And then mm -hmm. every time I click on that cell, you yep. know, if I'm working it, if, you know, I, I do the same thing to do a lot of like, when you say, how do you find your ASINs? I personally use the kind of the storefront stalking or advanced keep a training, probably the most for me personally. Kelly does a lot more reverse sourcing from pictures or things like that. But as I'm doing it, I'll insert in the spreadsheet that I download from Keepa, that column, yep. copy the formula over. And then I'll go open 25 links at one time for the next 25 items, work those across the screen. And that's just a lot faster way I can get through and, and kind of source through those items really fast of what can I easily source versus not easily source mm. much quicker than looking at Keepa than typing in the title and, and things like that. So Right, right. You developed a pretty slick system. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that advanced keep of sourcing really is powerful for those who, again, you bring up another great resource. I'm going to explain to the listeners a little bit what that is. And In, inside the Proven Amazon course, you're going to find multiple modules. One of them, once you've taken the basic replens training, is the advanced keep of sourcing, which has, I think, 11 or 12 different ways to use Keepa to source products. And you mentioned storefront stocking, which is one of the yeah. strategies in there. Yeah, uh, yeah it just there's so many ways. Right. to dig in and find opportunities. But um, yeah, sounds like you've really got it dialed in. I love having, as you described, uh, we don't do as much retail arbitrage as we used to, although we do a significant amount pulling items off local shelves. I love right. having that shared spreadsheet that at any given time, anyone on our team can look at. And you know, I'll do it frequently. I'll, do, I'll make a Kroger run or whatever Walmart. And while I'm there, I'll pull up the team spreadsheet, just right. take a quick scan down, like, oh, we need eight of these. Yeah, Buy it, drop it on there. So everyone knows it's been bought now. No one else is going to buy it too. Right. You know, it's just such a great way to yeah. to kind of monitor your local retail arbitrage activities. And uh, yeah, it sounds like you're yeah. dialing that in. Yeah. The other one, Keepa, that uh, you know, use it. It's it's not for you to be very simple, but I think a lot of people aren't doing. There's times you're, you're going to reverse search something and there's so many sponsored ads. It's like you're scrolling forever to trying to find those one or two items. And I'll, for some reason, I'll see it the most. I'm like, hey, this sold really well. Or is there a different flavor or a different quantity pack or whatever? I'm going and try to look to see if there's anything kind of related to the ASINs I'm selling. And you just get tired of scrolling past sponsored ads that, are, that a lot of times aren't even related to what you're looking at, right? You know, right. is to go in and plug that information into Keepa and do the search that way through the kind of advanced data. And then go, okay, I only want this. Here's my list of 15 items. These are the only ones I need to look at now because they match my drops. They match the price and things like that. And it very quickly gets me to some of those variations that I was trying to get to, but I was spending through many, many pages of scrolling on, on Amazon itself. Hey, pardon the interruption for just a moment, but I've got to tell you about one of the favorite sponsors that we've had around here for quite a while, simply because so many people are using their services now. They're very popular in our community. Sellerboard loves us and we love them. What do they do? They help you know if your products are profitable. On an ASIN by ASIN level, you can dive into the details of which of your products are performing well and which ones need to be cut out, along with a host of other new really cool features that they're constantly adding and innovating. It's a very inexpensive tool. It's very easy to set up. And we strongly encourage you to go take a look at the special offer they have just for listeners to this podcast at silentgym.com slash numbers. Jump over there, check out what they've got for us for just a few dollars. You could get rolling and know your numbers later today. Hey, let's get back to today's episode. Here's my list of 15 items. These are the only ones I need to look at now because they match my drops, they match the price and things like that. And it very quickly gets me to some of those variations that I was trying to get to, but I was spending through many, many pages of scrolling on, on Amazon itself. Yeah. Yeah, I it, stating the exact same thing you just said slightly differently is you got to kind of be in um, brainstorming random results mode if you're going to use Amazon.com as your research tool, which I like doing. Yeah. I don't mind scrolling to page two to page three, kind of bunny trailing, we call it. Yeah. 
That's and, and you'll see stuff jump off the page at you. But when you're like, okay, no, I, I need to get some quick information. I, I want to dial in. I only want stuff that drops this many times a month. I want stuff that's, you can even say it's trending towards having fewer sellers versus trending towards having more right. sellers. Like you yeah, can absolutely. really get some fun data. Just plug it into Keepa. That database is, is amazing. Yeah. For those who don't know what Keepa is, go listen to podcast episode 369. We reference it all the time around here. It really is the only must-have tool. It's about 20 bucks a month. Right. And, uh, yeah. So until you're using and understand and know Keepa, and I would say this too, Mike, I mean, I've been using Keepa for years and I'm constantly surprised at some of the new features and functions and the the ways you can massage and the data and 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 sort it and uh, yeah. just pull out incredible opportunities. So yeah, it's it, there's always more to learn. The uh, sellers haven't been around a while, but maybe listening to this later, go look up Jimmy Smith's YouTube video on variations and how to look at those. I thought I had some fantastic finds early on uh, looking at uh, the Keepa data and so forth, and they were learning opportunities. In <laughs> most cases, I, I eventually got out what I needed to, so I didn't, you know, it wasn't too painful of a lesson, but uh, kind of explaining how to look at it and go, okay, here's how many reviews they had. Here's the ones that are really selling and kind of trust the data on, but Mm -hmm. Those first few lessons are potentially uh, painful. It's a pretty funny list of, you know, I say funny because in retrospect, you know, we've all gone through it, but the the forehead slap moments yeah. of like, okay, that's why everybody says, beware of variations. Right. That's why everybody says, don't go too deep. Right. That's why everybody says, know your numbers. Like until you learn that lesson and you slap your forehead, a lot of people, uh, you know, just like, oh, I, I cannot kind of outsmart it. Like, oh, wow, I found a, this is an incredible yeah. winner. Well, it sells really well in the color red, but right. you just bought six of the color black. Yeah. And that never sells. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to sit, you're going to be like, this ASIN looked great. Why is it just sitting there? Well, there's a variation and everybody buys red. Right. <laughs> Nobody yeah. buys the color you got. Yeah. And until it's, it's happened to you so often, it's, yeah. And that's, uh, I'll stick a link to Jimmy's uh, video on variations in the show notes, as well as links to everything else we've talked about for the listeners. Say advanced yeah. keep the sourcing as a module. We sell that separately, but it, it's also in the proven Amazon course. So yeah, lots of good modules and resources you're mentioning, yeah. man. I love it. That'll all be in the show notes for the listeners. Yeah, uh, I'm talking to some people there, you know, you're beating the head against the wall and, and you talk about being a, being a warrior and those after, after beating your head against the wall a few times, it, it starts to ring home. But you know, I try to, I tell myself every time I, I run into one of those items to embrace the challenge and the adversity. If this was too easy, that everybody would do it, and there wouldn't be an opportunity. You know, it's the fact that you've got to work hard and you've got to fight through the battles to make it that there's still opportunity there for those who are willing to work for it to get it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, or post not telling them on the Facebook group that somebody's like, I thought this was easy. And you had some comment basically that was back like, well, it's not complex, but no one said it was easy. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, anything in life worth having, man. It's just, again, we're both at the age now where we realize anything in life worth having didn't come easy right if it did that was a red flag it's going to be gone just as fast man yeah like anything worth having blood sweat tears work risk sacrifice and yeah learning to find gratitude in the fact that there are some hurdles because if it was so easy we could train a bunch of monkeys to do it somebody would have trained a bunch of monkeys to do it and like you said the opportunity's done right it's it's simple it's yeah. a simple concept but yeah it, it's uh it's not easy yeah we've never yeah. claimed it's easy yeah so <laughs> there's uh, there's always more to learn i mean i've been doing this yeah. for 22 years and i'm blown away i learn something new every day that i i think to myself why didn't i know this years ago right every day yeah what else like what else is on your list man we can keep going into your story or or you know anything else about your business any questions for me uh, you're doing a great job i mean you're you're just a and I know you well enough. You're naturally a teacher at heart, man. Like you want to get in there and provide value for folks, yeah. but I wouldn't mind providing some value for you if there's anything yeah. that you're struggling with or thinking through. Um, the uh, the one other kind of humorous item, but lesson learned carefully, reusing some boxes. And I had been covering up the barcodes. I wasn't particularly concerned if the little, you know, the, the label or typing at the very top was completely covered and uh, was getting some boxes that a family member was getting from work. And uh, barcode was covered up, and I got a call from him. Said oh, I just got a call from my workplace, and uh, apparently barcode didn't get covered up because they just got your box that was meant for Amazon. And uh, wow! So, oh no! So I figured we completely forgot to cover up the barcode. So I get the box back. They picked it up from work and were kind enough to bring it back to me. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to repack it. And as I looked at it closer, we had covered up the barcode, but we the, like return label kind of at the very top that had typed out the address. Mm -hmm. It, the only thing I can come up with in the automatic sorting is maybe the barcodes were face down and so they didn't see them. 
And so what it looks like is then UPS actually looked at the label where it was supposed to go and printed out a new barcode sticker, stuck it on there, and they got shipped there. Our barcodes going to Amazon are still on the package. Wow. And so that's and interesting. That extra effort by UPS to say, hey, here's where it was supposed to go, because the, that there's now a barcode on top of our blank labels that we put Yeah. On. So let me repeat this scenario just to make sure, because I've never actually heard of this. Talk about learning something every day. Because we tell people often, if you're going to use a box that's been used before and it maybe has a UPS address, right. on, make sure to cover up the barcode on there. Well, right. you did. Right. You didn't cover up the actual address itself. Right. So that ended up being, even though you had another barcode and address right. on the box, someone noticed that slightly hidden address looked it up, created a new barcode, put it on there, and then it went back to the place yes. where the used box had been picked up. Yeah. So <laughs> I've never heard of that. I had Cover either, it all, so. man. Cover <laughs> it all. I thought for sure we completely missed the barcode. You know, I'm like, well, you know, you ship out 20 boxes a week and I can see how yeah. this happened. We're going to be super careful. When I'm, once I got the box back, I was surprised that there is another barcode now on top of our cover up, covered up labels, you know. Wow. Well, Anyway, we, we got the box back and yeah. it went back out this week. But sure. <laughs> a recent example. Huh. I've got to say, I don't think I've ever heard of that. When I have heard of people, you know, they'll just draw a line through the barcode thinking that'll do yeah. it. Like, no, if you can see any of it, man, right. they're going to, the scanner's going to catch it on the outside right. of your box. You don't want any barcodes except yeah. the one you put there. <laughs> yeah. And you also don't want any exposed addresses apparently either apparently, because yeah, that was a new you one might have a, a very thorough, kind hearted, UPS delivery driver who's like, oh, yeah. I see an address. Let's create a new label. Smack. Something. Yeah. Yeah. So wow. good tip. Yeah. I, I've never heard of that one. So went to the conference last year you talked about and, uh, yeah, you know, learned, learned a fair amount. And it's kind of funny now because as I'm going through things, now you hear people's voices, you know, in the back of your head talking about it, like, oh, this is what they're talking about. You know, have a bad day. You can hear Robin Joyce going, just find more ASINs, find more ASINs. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> When you really hit your head against the wall, I hear Ami um, say something where she had a comment that we all love Amazon. We all hate Amazon. And the whole room kind of laughed because, you know, you've been through it enough. You have those moments and you just went, ah. Yeah. So you tell yourself to embrace adversity and, and keep moving on. So, yeah, I've I've referred to, well, I re referred to eBay and Amazon the same way over the years. It's like that super annoying roommate who <laughs> always pays the rent on time and always does those little favors you need done but man are they annoying you don't yeah. want to get rid of them they're just awesome yeah but oh my gosh are they annoying at the same time yeah it's that but again if it if it was super simple and smooth everybody'd be doing it but uh, right. you know i think you're on the cusp too mike just as an observation you're kind of at that stage where other doors of opportunity should and will start opening based on relationships and partnerships yeah. and products and brands and consulting and you're talking about becoming a coach with us on our team and like those doors you're at the level now where you've figured out the bulk of the strategies for making this work and you could replicate that for right. other people and that's where you kind of start to create some uh, real stability yeah these income streams right yeah. so i'm excited to see you move into that stage as well yeah i am too i, I recently had a uh, company come to me and ask if i was willing to work with them on you know workers they're not on Amazon, but they have a website and they have a product and some of that. And like, hey, are you willing to help us look at this? And so starting to look at that and going back to, uh, I think it's proven product partnering. And I haven't done yep. that course yet, but trying to to dig through that. And oh, you'll you know, love it. Yeah. Again, it's not so, complex. Arguably yeah. a simpler business model than the one we're talking about right now. And we've got some really good guys in our area. Uh, right. Well, Jonathan Bricker is one of the coaches, yeah. actually goes to my church. He's on the worship team at my church. He's yeah. actually also one of the foremost PPP coaches on our team. That's all his businesses. He, yeah. He, he's got his parents' brand that he sells. Yeah. He started off trying to do some replens, but he was quickly sucked into helping his parents with their brand, blew it up. Just that one case study success. Now he's got multiple clients and doesn't even really sell on his own Amazon account all that much. Right. But he's doing what you just described. We call it the proven product partnering. It's a module inside the proven Amazon course. I know you know this, Mike, but for the yeah. listeners. Sure. And uh, yeah, it's a simple concept. And you've got proof of concept now that you know how this landscape works. And you don't want to overpromise initially. A new brand getting onto Amazon is going to face some challenges. But sure. you know how to navigate those challenges. And you can get paid well to help a company navigate that landscape. Right. Yeah, great opportunity. Yeah. One of the lessons I'm having to re, re, not train myself, but remind myself on is take that time to make sure you're doing the training and getting 
kind of additional help. It's easy to get sucked in. Okay, I'm doing this exact same thing over and over again. And that's not all bad, but make sure you're taking a, a certain amount of time each week to sharpen the iron type of thing and, and learn a new yeah. process and, and look at some of the trainings. And sometimes just going through the same training you've been through three times, but now that you've done it a hundred times, what they were trying to teach you the first time, oh, that makes sense now. You know, yes. I, I completely missed it the first couple of times. Uh-huh. So Yeah, I'm, I'd be curious how you're balancing that out because you are putting in significant time and hours and you're trying to balance out some other, you know, you're a grandpa, you're a father, yeah. uh, you know, a husband, you got a lot of commitments with church, that kind of thing. Like, how much time are you committing to continuing to learn versus running the business? Like, um, how are you, how are you yeah. working that out in your head right now? In, in some cases, the... uh Rabbi Daniel Laplin, like his books, I can listen to those while I'm driving to the store and, and things like that. And so I do a lot of books on tape and have for a long time. And so those items are are good. But to go back and watch some of the videos and, and some of that to further learn those lessons that are on the PAC course, I, I haven't done that probably the last four weeks. And I can tell like, okay, I, I, it's time. I need to go back and, and watch some of those and process through what they're doing and, you know, look at a new angle type of thing and, and sharpen myself up a little bit as well. Yeah. And, and, so, and some of it requires a visual, you know, I yeah. wish we could condense everything into, you know, we have people all the time like, oh, if, if only it was all audio. It's like, man, it's, it's kind of hard to describe all the moving parts of a keepograph audio yeah. stuff. Yeah, sure. I just created a new module for the course about selling above the buy box. And right. if you were to just listen to that content, it would be virtually impossible for me to describe what it is I'm showing you on the screen, right? Right. Uh, so sometimes it does require sitting down and everyone has different learning styles, but yeah. it's hard to get away from that visual <laughs> part yeah. for a lot of it. It really is. Yeah. But, you know, you go back to some of the old, uh, some good listening is some of the uh, old events, the proven conferences, you know, we're getting ready to do our 12th event. Uh, but some of the old, you know, last year's, year before, some of the presentations, phenomenal. And you can listen to those. Those are designed right. to be listened to. So that's some great stuff, too. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that's good. It, it's good that you're aware. And, you know, for me, I use my my routine is kind of mornings is my learning time. Yeah. So if I'm on a, I like to try to get in an hour or so, if possible. I've been pretty disciplined about it. Five or six days a week, man, just out there for an hour and a run or exercise of some kind and and that's when i'm listening to good content yeah that's typically the way i get it too i don't spend a lot of time going over videos that have a visual element either but a lot of it i already kind of know or i helped create too so right yeah got that uh, I, I have found some of it i can do the videos but well, well, first of all i almost have to put it on the calendar or you just if you wait for the opportunity wait till it's convenient it's never convenient you know put it on the right. calendar to whether it be for you in the morning or it's going to be, there's a block Thursday afternoon or whatever, you know, to make that happen. Mm -hmm. The other one I can do some of what I've done is when I'm packing, put the video over there. Because while there's times you need to look at that video, but what they just say, there's an awful lot of it. You can digest, you know. Multitask. Audio. Yeah. And so go back and, and put it on one and a half speed and I'm packing boxes and, you know, stuff them in a, in a bag or whatever else. And then like, wait a minute, what? What was that? Pause, rewind 30 seconds, look at the graph, go, ah, good point. Next, mm -hmm. you know. And keep mm -hmm. on going so I can multitask that way to help some too. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Well, yeah, you're always in learning mode. I, I really have reduced down success in e-commerce to people who, who you know, it, it's one thing to learn strategy, learn a strategy and deploy it. Anyone can do that. But the people who last and persist and really do well, there's a couple things. They're always in learning new things mode. Right. And you're not afraid to make some mistakes along the way, learning, constantly experimenting, right? And they are always in relationship building mode too. I've noticed those are the two things. And if I had to pick one of the two, relationships almost trump always learning new things because by its very nature, making relationships intentionally, you're going to be learning new things that way. So if I had to yeah. just pick one, it's relationships. But sure. um, yeah, you always got to, you have to always be in learning mode. And I think that's what, you know, I, I often say, you know, Amazon and its complexities keep my team relevant the same way the IRS keeps accountants relevant. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's yeah. always changing. There's always new things to learn. There's always some new rules coming. We can help you be prepared for that. Um, and and so that that's, you know, that's job security, man, because the landscape is always changing uh, for for us, for sure. But yeah, you're doing a great job, man. Congratulations. Yeah. And uh, it, it it's great seeing you build a, a very viable operation that's just, I mean, you're, once you've hit that, you know, $30,000 a month type of level, um, there's a lot of triggers that can flip and right. now you're 50, 70, 80, right. 
you know, a lot of doors of opportunity opening up for you that uh, you kind of move away from the grind mode into more of the managing a system mode Yeah. at that point. Yeah. I have, uh, to a certain point, I've I've enjoyed the grind, get back and per se, get my hands dirty. But, you know, previously I've been in management for 20 years. And so there's also a point that said, you know, long-term the goal was to get towards, okay, I want to manage a process, but I've, but I've enjoyed both. So one of the questions I have for you right now is I've been turning off the selling in Canada and Mexico mode that they keep trying to push towards, but right. what's your thought or recommendation on the, the Canada and Mexico and other markets? We've got some new content coming in 2024 that's going to help us, uh, our community really kind of, especially those of us who are in the United States, right? cautiously step into Canada and with even more extreme caution, consider maybe Mexico. But okay. the general advice is, it's kind of the same advice we give when someone says, hey, I want to set up a new ASIN. It's like, probably not. Just no, don't. If you're new, if you don't really know what you're doing, don't set up a new listing mm-hmm. on Amazon ever. It's not worth it. Right. You need to kind of be at the level where you're at, Mike, before you even think about it. You're kind right. of at that level now. Same thing with selling into Canada and Mexico. Until you're doing tens of thousands of dollars consistently, don't even think about it. Don't play okay. with it. And the reason is Amazon will show you, hey, your ASINs are eligible to be sold in uh, Canada, Mexico. You want to pull a trigger and go? Like, sure, why not? More money, right? Yeah. The yeah. next thing you know, you're selling products that Amazon slipped slipped past their radar that aren't allowed to be sold in Canada. Amazon's not the one that's going to get in trouble. You are. Right. right. Because there's products that are designed to be sold only in the U.S. And that brand is going to get very grumpy when they see it showing up in Canada. Okay. Right? And, and navigating that with a large book of business with numerous ASINs can be very tricky. Now, yeah. there are some exceptions to that, and we are going to dive into that a little bit with some new content, some new modules we have, how to find out, how to make sure you're okay, good to go. And there's a lot of people in Canada that are moving a lot of products. Really, it's it, Canadian brands don't mind being sold in America for the most part. So yeah. our Canadian sellers kind of have a bit of an advantage there, it seems like. And a lot of them are starting to navigate this very well. Brands based in the United States, as a general statement, tend to get a little grumpier when you start flipping them into Canada. And yeah. I don't know anyone's really figured out the Mexico thing yet. That's kind of okay. like a, just a total random roll of dice, man. <laughs> yeah. Is it going to get delivered? I don't know. I mean, is the <laughs> brand allowed? No one knows. Yeah. Um, so I don't, we don't mess with it at all. So as a general rule, leave it turned off. Don't let your products go. Now, once you own your own brand, yeah, sure. And that could be coming at some point. Um, okay. When you're selling other people's brands as a reseller, no, just leave okay. it turned off as a general rule. Yeah, okay. good question, man. Do you have a general level where it starts to make sense? Because, you know, I, on one hand, I'd love to have Jeff Schick on retainer. On the other hand, $100 a month, if you're, you know... If you're making, uh, you know, a lot of money, it's absolutely no brainer. And at my point, I'm sitting here looking at a couple items like inventory lab to to make the whole shipping process because we're doing twenty to twenty five boxes a week through Seller Central, which is a little bit cumbersome. Doable, obviously, but mm-hmm. cumbersome. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, inventory lab is not cheap. And going through it, my wife's like, yeah, I don't think so. We don't need to spend that much money on anything right now. Let, let's just, you know, stay where we're at. And so, well, one of the ways I explained to her, and it's kind of one of the ways I heard you explain it was think about what time it may free up. And what's that worth in other avenues? You know, mm-hmm. how many hours are you spending prepping and shipping and whatever? And do you save that amount of money easily in time freed up towards inventory labs? So I think I'm pretty close to pulling the trigger on that. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's a math decision. Whereas the the Jeff Schick question is more of a uh, mitigating your risk. Right. Like how much insurance should I buy right. when I'm young? How much life insurance do I need? When I'm older, how much do I need? Like it's right. it's kind of one of those like mitigating the risks and and uh it is a it's a tough thing because I can make a pretty strong case that it's never too soon right to get someone like that on your team and I can make another strong case of like hey if you're fit and you're running a good clean operation you're being super careful with your ASINs you're not grabbing generic listings and you've you know if you're paying attention to avoiding those IP complaint issues and that kind of thing you're probably going to be just fine. And your worst case scenario is if it does happen, you can still call them. You're just going to have to pay a little bit more. Right. Like you're going to have to back pay all the stuff that you probably could have paid all along. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right? That's, you know, so, we got our first they, counterfeit claim with, uh, without a, a test buy this week. And so going through all that, I'm thinking it's not that you can't do it yourself. Plenty of people have. At the same time, right. it'd be really nice to pick the phone up and go, I kind of already paid for this. Deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they, and he, and he will. And the nice thing is too, that, um, 
there's connections in our community. And I'm not talking anybody out of not subscribing because it's going to cost you more. Well, let me, maybe here's the way I should describe what I'm trying to say, Mike, is up until Jeff entered the scene in our community here a couple of years ago, your options were wait till you got in trouble and then desperately try to find somebody who would help you. And it's going to cost you three to $5,000 if you're, right. if you've been temporarily suspended and you're like, oh man, this is going to be painful. Now there's a hundred dollar a month option. Right. And if you run into something, anything, Amazon policy, legal, uh, disbursements, like let's say they, they claim a 50 pound box showed up empty yeah. and, and you file the dispute and they don't respond and like, okay, yeah. Jeff, help me out here. Right. Yeah. And like all that stuff can be offloaded. It really, as you, as you start to scale at about the point you are, it really yeah. starts to make financial sense where you're going to see one or two or three of these things yeah. every month. Like, man, it'd be nice just to hand this yeah. to somebody. And let's say you've valued your time at $30 an hour. That's yeah. the net profit I'm putting in the bank for my efforts every hour I'm working. And that number will slowly climb over time. You know, we've got people right. at several hundred dollars per hour or more. Yeah. That's their net value. So it's easy for them to justify these decisions. But if 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 it's going to save me three to five hours a month of just like, ugh, stress and paperwork and, you know, okay, yeah, for a hundred bucks a month, it makes total sense yeah. to have someone else handling that. Uh, if that's, I don't remember the price, is it 89 or some, something, something like that, 90 yeah, bucks a month, something like that. Yeah, yeah. so a few bucks a day. Um, I'd say the odds of you regretting pulling the trigger are pretty low Yeah. on that. But again, you know, it's kind of like uh, I was talking to my son the other day about getting health insurance, you know, for the first time for a young, healthy family. Like, best way to handle this is to stay super healthy and have high deductibles, yeah. man. That's yeah. the best. That's the best way to handle health insurance, and uh, you know, get that catastrophic coverage. But you don't need that twenty five hundred dollar a month plan that covers every time you sneeze and have to buy, right. you know, some flu medicine. Uh, you don't need that. Uh, right. Kind of the same same thing here, man. If you keep running a pretty clean business, you know, odds of you getting in any kind of trouble you can't navigate is pretty slim. Yeah. So you know, it's yeah. you're right on that line. If you guys were only selling about ten thousand a month, I'd say, yeah, you can probably wait. You'll be okay. If yeah. you were 50, I'd be like, no brainer, man. You should have done yeah. this months ago. You're kind of right on that line. Yeah. That helps because I'm, you know, looking at the sales the past week or so. Uh, we were running, I told you a couple of weeks, but the with the numbers we're at now, you know, I'd expect to be 40 in another within the next month and, and continuing to climb and build. So it's kind of at that edge right there. Like, yeah, I think it's feeling like it's about the right time. Yeah. I'd love to have $100 in my pocket right now, but at the same time, it's, Mitigating the risk, as you said. So, you know, it's kind of right there in that border. It's kind of like buying insurance. It really is. You know? Yeah. And then you just, it's nice to know that the, uh, you know, the odds are low of you getting permanently suspended, even if you don't have anybody on your team. Right. Once you do have somebody that's kind of helping represent you and helping you navigate, it, it goes to in just minuscule odds of permanent suspension. You could still run into a week long challenge or whatever, but Amazon really is in the business of kicking out the bad actors and the bad guys. And then when they accidentally kick out the good guys, letting them back in once they understand they're dealing with a real person with a real business and a real family and they're not some scammer that's just trying to, you know, right. take a bunch of money from a bunch of, their, bunch of their customers and run, right? You're not that guy. Okay. The doors open. It's just sometimes it's a, it's a process that takes a few days or a few right. weeks. I've heard of it taking a few months, right. um, which is why the multiple income stream thing becomes important. But all of this is like marred, you know, long into the, bell curve type of stuff. Yeah. But when it does happen, you hear all about it, man. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, uh, it's an interesting, I'm glad Jeff does what he does for sure. He's, he's a great sponsor of the show, but sure. he's also a guy who's helped dig a lot of people out of yeah. you know, what otherwise would have been some painful, stressful situations and they're back up in a few days. Yeah. That helps. Good. Yeah. I think we're, we're also looking at, uh, we, we bought in and, and listened to like 90% of the bundling course. And that's kind of one of our, our next Excellent. steps here is like, okay, I need to go back and re-listen to all that probably again, and then start trying to put feet to the fire to, to make that happen now as well. So a lot of work yet to be done too. Yeah, for sure. And you're going to, you'll enjoy that process. There's, it's very rewarding to have your own ASIN with your own brand on that bundle of products and you haven't had to go out and invent you know the world's greatest mouse trap to do it you're just adding in a high value item to some other right. brand products that people recognize and you're you're getting the leverage the power of that brand recognition on your own brand on right. your own ASIN that no one else can sell against yeah so that's a good thing for you to start experimenting with as well yeah I, you're at that stage 
For sure. You're probably slightly past the stage where that makes a lot of sense to play yeah. with. So I'm glad you're in that. And, and for the listener's sake, that course that Mike just described, Proven, Proven Branded Bundles, it's a module that will be added in early 2024 before our conference in May, for sure. Okay. Uh, so it's just another, another great module in the Proven Amazon course and something we'll be talking a lot about at the conference as well. So well done there, man. Yeah, I, I love the trajectory you're on. Um, You've built a great business relatively quickly. I've seen some people take three years to get to where you're at. Um, and then we got these other people who are just, yeah. typically it's like the single guys with nothing but time and this is all they do. And they, yeah. they're two or three months and they're doing this, but you're not far behind them. Like you guys yeah. have hit it hard. Yeah. And and you've done a great job. So well done, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Well, anything else on your mind before we start to wrap this one up? I think it was a... No, I, I got more to ask. Episode. I had a couple questions for you and I asked them and I appreciate your answers and your time. So... I've enjoyed Excellent. it. Thank you. Excellent. Well, you know how to get a hold of me if you need me, yeah. man. Anytime. I, I love seeing your family grow. And uh, and uh, we're both grandpas now, which is a yeah. cool stage, man. I just, I love that. And it great. a couple couple blessed guys for sure, man. Absolutely. It's good It's good to see you, Mike. Well, as we start to, start to wrap this one up, uh, let me talk to listeners for just a minute and, and just let you know if, if you're watching this show today and you've never seen other episodes of this, this is kind of typical of what we do on this podcast. We've got hundreds of these interviews. You can go back in time and see great students from the Proven Amazon course from our coaching program who have taken the stuff that we teach here and built beautiful businesses. That's what this podcast is committed to. So if you want to hear more of these stories with great tips and strategies mixed in, go to silentgym.com. There's a link to our podcast and you can enjoy the episodes. But on behalf of our guest today, my good friend who was way back 30 years, man, I don't know, I'm gonna have to do some math. That makes me feel really old, dude, but it could be right. Yeah. Uh, Mike, you did a great job today, man. Say hey to Thank Kelly you. and your crew. Appreciate it. All right. And, uh, on behalf of my guest and our whole team that does these episodes together uh, for you guys, uh, we thank you for your time today. We'll have another great episode for you very soon. We'll talk to you then. Before I let you go, one last reminder to our incredible sponsor, Celeboard. Thank you. And to our listeners, go check out the special offer they have for us. Hundreds of us use that tool to track our listings on Amazon and know which ones are profitable, which ones aren't, and a whole bunch of other really cool features. You can learn all about this inexpensive, easy to set up tool at silentgym.com slash numbers. Go check them out. Tell them we sent you. We'll have another great episode for you very soon. 